Actually, I can get into parent and child objects a little bit later. Let's do something more fun. Well, let's talk about generally what this cardboard SDK that we just installed really is. So let me just show them. Uh, yeah, so pull the camera up and just press play, and it's going to give you that. So that is what you're going to be seeing on your phone uh, with the Google Cardboard. And when you're actually rotating it, it's going to be turning, and it's going to give you that stereoscopic vision. So this is the default camera for cardboard that um, Google gives you to be able to do VR with just your smartphone. And this also works on iOS as well. It's not just an Android. Um, so any mobile device would work. Um, so, so some yeah. background of, of what this really is. What it does is it takes, um, instead of that one camera, where you have that one scene uh, straight in front of you, what it does is it breaks it down into two cameras. And mm -hmm. if you, you actually look at the so higher, if you look at see it. here, it has a camera left and a camera right. So that's one for each eye, and that allows you to see things literally in 3D. So if you're looking at it, um, the reason things become 3D is your eyes have an offset. So your left eye sees it from one angle, your right eye sees it from another angle, and that combined is like, wow, that's 3D. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly what it does. It literally uh, creates two it's cameras. There's a little space see. between the cameras that gives you like, the, the, the depth between objects. Yes. Um, and then it also does the positional tracking. So now it uses your cameras, your, your so phone to So let's do less talking. <laughs> so let's do it. So what he's saying right now, so let's do something like cool. So let's go to the game object, the 3D object, let's make a cube. Right? So let's just pop in a cube and uh, it, you know, it might not be visible because it just might have spawned it somewhere funky. But um, let me just put this game view here so it's always showing. So just so you can always see what I'm doing. Alright, so our cube, if I just grab it, I'll just use the move tool and just drag it up here. We got a nice cube. I look at that with the lighting. Like so, in film, you have to pay for each light. With Unity, you can add lights all you want. So you literally, you can create scenes like millions of yeah. scenes for free. So yeah. like directional light in here. So just you know modify the strength of the shadow, strength of the light. It's all it's all easily accessible, and you can just access any pro object property just by clicking on it and in the inspector. So here we have our cube. So if I just maybe cut the needed because I added the cube while I was in play mode. That's a thing that you're going to notice in Unity is uh, if you're testing something and you create an object and you exit testing, it will delete the object back to the base point. So I'll just do that again. Um, yeah, if anyone is confused or is having any trouble, just raise your hand and we'll, we'll, we'll get it off you. Yeah. Um, I didn't see when cardboard was added to the hierarchy. Uh, okay, so just go into the cardboard folder. Did you, have you imported the cardboard package? Yes. Yeah, so just there's a cardboard folder in the projects, and you want to go to prefabs in the cardboard folder, and you should see like five items in there. And you pick cardboard kit, so right here. And you just drag that in. And yeah. it's your cardboard camera. Uh, and uh, make sure to show them to delete the main camera and everything. Delete the main camera too. I did. Um, it's uh, I can see the, uh, the the double cameras when I hit play, but not when it's not. No, yeah, yeah, that's normal. That's yeah, normal. It's normal. Um, set up like that. Um, so that's just how we did it. But yeah, so we have our cube. So let's just let me just show you a little demonstration. So what can we do with this cube? So we have our camera right here. Let's make like a little bit of a better angle. I'm going to move it up and I'm going to rotate. Now don't be uh, intimidated by, by any of these tools like the rotate and move tool or whatever. It's all things that you will get used to. Um, and it's really just a few main things. But if I press play right now, the cube is just chilling there, not doing anything. Why is that? Because the cube is just a static object right now. It has no behavior to it. The cube doesn't know what it wants to do until you tell it what it needs to do. So let's make the cube do something. So what can we make the cube do? Let's make the cube fall, for example. So now, how do you make the cube fall? We can hang up it and I'll talk about it. Ah, sure. So, so then, um, one of the cool things that you have here is what you'd get with VR, essentially, and you get with cardboard, is you don't get a static camera. Anywhere else, if you're just developing a unity... Yeah, what do you do? Just say it. This is the best part. Physics. <laughs> <laughs> who here feels like origin, who wants to get into deep physics? No, not deep physics. Deep physics. <laughs> <laughs> who wants to get into deep physics and how to move stuff? And who wants no, 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 it's not. Learn not, 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 not. 
So how you want to do that? You already have your cube. You just add component right here when you have the cube selected. And in the search there, you just type rigid body. And that's it. Now when I press play, cube falls. Not very impressive, right? But if I just control C, control V, so copy and paste. Let's, and then I'm going to select here in a hierarchy, I'm going to select all of those cubes. And I'm just going to copy and paste them. No, no, no. <laughs> it's never enough cubes so this for is a physics demonstration. This is the physics demonstration of 52 card pickup. This is 52 cubes. <laughs> yeah. Basically, they were um, a mess. Yeah, I want to make a mess. <laughs> all right. So let's Oh, they're stacked on top of each other. So that's our physics, right? So let's just do something like, uh, you know. Well, oh yeah, just do it like while well, I'm angle. Sure. Yeah, you're right, you're right. So let's do it. And that's the fun thing. Is like you saw he just dragged and dropped a component. All the physics Copy back in the day, yeah. you would have to make, no, do not pivot. Okay, so it's like a pivot. It's fine. I'll still work <laughs> yes. All of this needed to be done by you. Now it's done by Unity and given to you for free. So you, you want something to fall? No need to program. You see how this thing is this kind of, this kind of barely holding on? You still pull, right? you pull this from under, oh, there you go. Yes. Yeah. So, and it's really fun. And then, look, you don't need to know any coding to do this. Um, most of the stuff comes already, like, ready for you to make basic things or even the intermediate things. Um, you just need to know what, what the components are and stuff, but that's why we're here to kind of show you. <coughs> and just for you to output the, the code, you run it with these classes, you're seeing it in 3D. Right? So that's even really cool. And we'll talk about the hardware a little bit too, right? in case we, uh, we missed it. So there's, what cardboard is, is the hardware. So everything that you do in 3D, um, you need hardware. There's more advanced hardware that we'll go into in the next sessions, but this is the most simple, affordable, portable VR hardware on Earth. Um, and it's based on this Google Cardboard technology. Google at first made these kind of as a... It was, a Google, it was someone at a hackathon yes. actually made it. And uh, that was right around when Oculus came out. Yes. And it was a Google I.O. and some guy just put together an Oculus from yeah. cardboard and Google was like, we love it. Basically, uh, like a tongue in cheek in your face, you just made a $300, $500 uh, piece of hardware. We made one out of cardboard, we give it out for free. And that just started the, the, uh, the, the floodgates were open all of a sudden. And now, it works with your phone. I yes. Mean, everyone has a smartphone nowadays. Um, and so what this does is it, it really creates these lenses for your smartphone. So just throw your smartphone in here. And it uses all your smartphones. Um, you want to load, load up a cardboard demo and just yeah, have some kind of circle And at the end, we'll have, um, we'll literally have lots of these demos. And this meetup, first meetup ever that is selling our own uh, top of the line glass optic, literally the best uh, cardboard you can buy. Yeah, and we sell it for twenty dollars. If you came with a laptop today and you came to learn, yeah, you, you want to go home and you start purchase. developing. Yeah, you, you need to have uh, some sort of eye lenses for, for any kind of VR, so uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is the most entry level right now, and yeah, if you have access, the there is a way to cheat if you're cross-sided. Right. <laughs> yeah, so you, you can do this thing in the center. Cross your eyes a little, and you'll yeah. see three images. You can also get your thumb in front, yeah, you can just go like this, and, and then like, but, but that's yeah. weird, yeah, that's yeah. like, I can show you guys that later. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's, you could definitely go crazy, but this is this is available to everybody. If you want to make VR, you can make it for the Oculus, you can make it for the Tango, any kind of equipment. But if you make it for the cardboard, you will have ten times as many people that are able to use it because of the uh, economy of it. Yeah, the New York Times. There are one, how many? Million and one point this three million. Weekend, million yes, please. Google card. Yeah, one point three million Google cardboards are going out to New York Times subscribers this weekend. Really? So the New yeah. York Times is going to start having VR content in their newspaper. Wow. Um, and then using, uh, so any yeah. app you build with, with cardboard, the New York Times is going to be able to. Yes, you'll be able to. Yeah. So flip a page and you know put your cardboard on and you see augmented reality. Yeah. So it's very very exciting. Kind and of it's going to be this. This is like the the very cheapest. Uh, People will laugh at you in the future if you have this. Yeah. But it will be good. Yeah. But this is going to be awesome. If you have this. 
you are uh, up in the game. Yeah, and uh, you'd be supporting the community, and uh, we're going to be going to be definitely doing like. Uh, Basically, being part of this community, not only are you just going to be getting you know, lessons and, and, and a meetup group, but we're also going to be giving you assets as well. We're going to be giving you 3D models, we're going to be giving you textures, animations, sounds, and those are all coming from our own design lab, not from something you already find on the internet. So we'll have exclusive content for people that are part of the meetup. And uh, a great way of showing support for that is with getting the headsets. And actually, uh, what we're going to be doing with the headsets is uh, each person that gets one will have your information, like your, your name and your email, and we'll print you a little sticker that's going to have a unique identification code on it. We're going to put on a case, and you're always going to have that little sticker that five years down the line, if you go and you enter that code into you know, our site, you'll be able to get, we'll know that you were there in the beginning. Um, and that'll definitely be rewarded. I can't tell you exactly how now, but I, I believe me, like if you show me ever that, that sticker and it's all worn out and stuff and when it's still there, like uh, I will love you forever for having that sticker. There's absolutely seniority in the community and what, what really this is, is not just teaching you how to use this stuff, we will actually be giving you uh, the assets, the literally the things Even to code. make these scenes with, oh, and no. the code from the greatest uh, artists, the VR artists of this generation. Yeah. And, and, yeah, and everyone that also does art and code and stuff, when they come to these meetups, uh, you can all share all of that and we can all pool it together and create literally a game development community for each other. Um, so if someone's already made you know, a driving game, that driving code could just get reused on someone else that's making a different kind of driving code, et cetera. So yeah, it's all about creating more and more content. And that's the whole idea of Unity, the community, um, free. Why, why not? Why, why, is, why is Unity free? So I can show them a little bit about all, all this community. Continue. So the community, right? That's the second biggest thing I'd say um, that I'd want to go over in this class is um, we already went over kind of how to set up the VR. It's so simple. You just install a cardboard package and you put it in there. Now that's not rotating, but when you have your phone, it's going to use your phone's orientation and the camera is going to look around. Um, but yeah. The second biggest thing is this thing called the Asset Store. So it's right here next to your screen. Or if you go Window. Or if you go Window Asset Store, uh, it should be right there if you, if you don't see it. Um, or you can just go on your web browser as well. But it's from here you can actually import into Unity straight. So let me just show you guys. So this is all content that's created specifically for Unity. It's all been tested with Unity and it's you have very polished content, you have you know, free content that someone just put up and wanted to share. But you can get things like, you know, like, uh, like player models, you can get things like, uh, like um, we got some, let's just do character, I'll be a better search term. Or we can just go in here. So you see like if I go into characters, you have all of these different types of things. You can get a zombie. Uh, so this is free. Now, this character right here, I mean, that's, in my opinion, that's a pretty high quality model. So I'll just click download. Um, and it's really that simple. I'll let it download. And when it finishes downloading, you just import it into your scene. And you have a zombie. And I'll show you that right now. We'll some zombies run around or something. All right, so it's asking the importing package. So I'll just import. Now, I've never seen that zombie. Like, that's my first time seeing that. But I just opened it up. And it's like, <laughs> Not, well, maybe in other people, but... But yeah, so this thing is the beauty of Unity is that you don't have to be a 3D artist, you don't have to be a texture artist, an audio artist, you don't need to even... It's great if you have a community and you know people that are good in these fields. But if you have either zero money or like $20, you can get enough assets on the asset store make game. to make a game by yourself. You don't need... Uh, you don't need these professionals to build a model for you. There's so many models that are completely free. I used to do 3D modeling, and uh, honest 3D modeling like is, is not cheap to get done. It'll pay like you know like four five hundred bucks for a custom character, and that's on the low end. Yeah. Um, but nowadays, it's like you know an artist can just put their art up and sell it to a thousand people instead of just one client. Um, so if you're a content creator, if you make audio, if you take pictures, you want to take pictures of textures, videos, all those things are welcome on the asset store and they will love you forever also for putting it up because they all think like 5% or whatever. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> you can sell it for free, yeah. you can sell it and make some money. Like, what exactly. are you going to do with your assets? Exactly. What are you going to do with your textures? If you mm -hmm. just have nice textures, 
just gonna sit, you know, this somebody else is gonna make this extra bed better. So I'm a zombie right here. So yeah, trap the zombie. In. <laughs> so uh, the zombie that I just imported has its own zombie folder right there. And it actually comes with a demo scene too. Now let me just go into real quick what, what a scene is. So this right now is not saved. Now if I go here to file and save scene, it's gonna ask me for a name, I'll just call it you know, one. Oh, just test. Let's just do a test. Um, so that is now here in the test. So if I just double click that, it'll open that scene. But if I go to zombie and I click on their demo, it's gonna pull up a whole scene that's already been set up with the whole hierarchy and everything, and that was saved in the Unity package. So you can do that, that's part of what the Unity package is. You can actually save the whole configuration of the scene, your, your mountains, your trees, everything, and make a scene and have multiple scenes at multiple levels, or any, any way that you want to use them. And the way that Unity has it set up is you open a new project, which is kind of like said, like what it sounds like. It's a project that uh, can have all your files, all your assets in it, and from there you can save individual scenes. So you can have a scene uh, with zombie coming at you. But really, the, the real way you use this is to create levels in a game. So uh, you have all the same characters, all the same um, kind of components within a project, and you save individual scenes that can be loaded individually uh, and better managed. So you can have everything set up with the camera, the animations, and then save it. Just set up another one, open that one up, and, and go this first. So yeah, uh, this scene right here. Now, uh, let me just see. I think this the zombie, let me see if it comes with animation. But if you click on your zombie folder, there should be a model folder there. Yeah. So on here, if I click on the zombie, so that's our imported asset right there. Um, and here you just set its properties like its scale, by you inserting its collision boxes or whatever, but that's, you know, we could get into that in some other lesson, but I just want to see here. Yeah, it has a walk animation. That's all you really need for a zombie. <laughs> that's great. So, uh, that's, that's great. So let's see what that looks like. Um, so I, this gives you like a little preview right here. Oh, that's wonderful. Like that. And it moves. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Alright, so let's actually do something for the zombie then. Just a throw a walk yeah, so exactly what you said. So look, before I go to this skybox, this guy really minimal in the scene. So lighting, that's so another window, a lighting, and uh, there's a lot of cool things in there, but again, that's a whole lesson in itself, is just lighting. Well, I'll just do this one simple thing, I'll just click the skybox right here, and I'll just type sky, and I'll just take the default skybox that they give you. So basically what he just did was he downloaded, he hit download, he imported it, you click the scene, you have this, and then from there, uh, you want to make it VR? Yeah, we'll so this is all it takes right now. You go to carboard, prefabs, and your cardboard head. Uh, What's the difference between the different uh, prefabs for the camera? So, all the way to right now. So basically, cardboard main is, is uh, the thing is, it's like they're essentially the same thing except for cardboard adapter. I think cardboard adapter... Oh, wait, they're no, all well, they're nested. So cardboard main has cardboard head in it. So car Let me let you drag them all in so we'll see right now. Yeah. The they're just nested objects. So oh. cardboard main is the big mega object. Within that is cardboard head. But they all essentially do the same thing. Yeah, um, which is literally the, 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 the thing that rotates when you rotate your head. So if you rotate your head, cardboard main prefab will move. And then within that, there's cardboard camera. Yeah, camera right. exactly. exactly. So the difference is to use cardboard head. That means that's that's pretty much the full object. Is you will have the head rotation on your phone, so it'll, it's automatically there. Whereas something, uh, for example, like just a uh, cardboard camera, won't rotate. It'll just give you the two eyes, but it'll be stationary. You try to do that, and that's the reason is to have that is maybe you have your own code for rotating your head. So they'll let you just nest that in. Uh, but that's a great question. So best practices always use. I prefer a cardboard main. Um, I use cardboard head. Yeah, cardboard head will work just as well. Yeah. Cardboard main has a few it's extra really things thing. for um, yeah for like what is it uh, some extra controls. But it's a stereo render. I think okay. Here's the difference. Uh, cardboard main gives you 3D stereoscopic render. I think. Um, so yeah, I guess if you want the highest quality. Go for cardboard main. Cardboard main. So just take it. Basically, what he's going to do is he's going to take the zombie scene. He just downloaded, double-clicked, open scene. He's going to take the camera main prefab 
Bam, track and drop. Rotate this towards their zombie. And you, sir, are ready to go. And you press play. And let me get rid of the main camera. Also, always remember to delete the main camera. Whatever camera you already have in there, right? if you're putting VR, you always want to have only one camera. Later on in code, you can turn cameras on and off and stuff if you want, but just for now, you have to delete the main camera. So, yeah, that's our zombie. Now, the zombie's not moving, it's stationary. And why is that? Because <laughs> the zombie has been told that he needs to move, and Unity doesn't assume what you're gonna be doing with these things. I mean, the zombie could be a skybox if you want it to be, or it could be a boat, but it doesn't, doesn't need to. Right now, we have a walk animation. So, I guess, I mean, I think I can get into just basic animation. We, we can. Uh, yeah. Basically, this it's actually really that easy. really is all there is to VR. You take your camera uh, asset and drop it in. What that does is, it, yeah, well, just, keep, oh, just set it up. You'll basically start setting up the animation in the background while I talk about this. And you can watch along. Um, it's, it's fairly in-depth. You don't have to grab all of this, but we'll kind of talk about what VR is and where we are right now. So right now, what you do by just dragging in that prefab, that cardboard main prefab, is you set up a, uh, a head controller where you are in one static place and you can see the camera is actually it's a little camera and it's, it's in a scene. The beauty of VR and cardboard, uh, cardboard main and cardboard SDK is that now, instead of rotating the camera through the game and through the code, the user is rotating the camera based on their head. So from there, if you want to make an experience, the very first easiest experience to make is an on rails <coughs> experience. So essentially, you want somebody to not just look around the scene, you want them to move through the scene. And to do that, you literally take, the way he's going to animate this zombie to move, you can take the camera and animate that. So you can carry the camera through the zombies, or you can yeah. make the zombies come at you. Absolutely. You can actually, um, if, the camera, if the zombie is moving, you can attach the camera to the zombie. And one of the cool things about the unit, yeah. You could be the zombie. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's do, do that. that. All right, cool. So, you might get motion yeah. sickness in the process. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. Hey, hey, yeah. so yeah. This yeah. might be cool. Right, so, uh, what I did right here, yeah, I think that was yeah. 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 So, yeah, that's the thing. It is, is you're limited only by your creativity. Now you have a camera. You know the technical limitations of it. You know what it does. How are you going to move it? Where are you going to put it? So, let me just explain. And where are you going to put the user? So uh, basically, to make a thing, it's super simple. It's an animation controller. The animation controller is—it's all created in here. You make an animation controller. I just call it zombie. I'll just put it. And in the zombie here, that gets dragged to its animation controller. And in here, just to go back to the zombie model, expand it. These are all, the, all components of it. In here, you should have this play icon. That's the animation. You drag it into the animation controller view, and boom. That will automatically now, when it when it starts, it'll just go to it. And this gives you a lot of flexibility with mixing multiple animations and such, but again, that could be a whole other yes. lesson. Animation so. is, is far and above and beyond this scope of this lesson. Yeah, but it's but just super basic. Yeah, you go into Unity, you type Unity animation, there's a whole bunch of tutorials, there's a whole, uh, a view for animation controllers, and there's logic you could put into it. It's really magical. Uh, but we're going to go super basic and just show you how to run the so animation that comes in. <laughs> the important thing that we have is that we can open up animations. Okay. No, it's fine, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like they would rather do oh, yeah. okay. chickens. This is absolutely a whole this super class, so we're not going to spend too much time on it. Yeah, I mean, literally just create. And then animation controller, it's right here, you see it? You just create that, you double click it, and you probably won't see this here, but you get that from actually going into the zombie model and open well, don't worry, it's too much uploading it all to, to the internet too yes. for future reference and stuff. So every lesson, at the end of the lesson, we'll have its own Unity package or multiple as needed. And, and uh, you'll always be able to go back and reference. Um, so And I'll have other free stuff too, so enjoy. Yeah. So, So, uh, well, what I'm going to do is I just want to do loop time. So, just on its animation, I just need to, well, I need to make a loop. Because it'll go like that and I'll stop. <laughs> 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 All right. So, I made a loop. Now, just in here, it's animation controls already put. If I just press play, he should be doing his animation. Now, he's standing still, still, but he's moving. Now, here's the trick. Most animations in 3D, especially for game development, uh, they're created in place. 
Well, the reason for that is because the animation is not assuming what you want to be doing with it. Uh, what you can do is then you can move the guy in code. So, you know, you can set your own speeds. It's completely at your own discretion on how you want to make this character move. Now, let me get into what I think a lot of you guys have maybe been waiting for so far. Uh, it is code. Ooh, the scary code. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so, the code is actually a lot easier than you would think it would be. Um, so, I'm just going to exit that play mode. Now, I want to do the same thing I just did right there. Real simple. I just want to make a move inch at you, like, just slowly like that. It's a transform position is what I'm going to do. Simple, simple, simple. So I'm just going to put them here somewhere. Now, in the project view, right click, create, C sharp script. And you can also use JavaScript. Um, we're not going to be using JavaScript for these classes because I just believe C sharp is best practice. Um, it gives you a lot better class structure. So there's a lot of reasons for it. You can ask me later if you want. You know the reasons. But um, yeah, so create a C sharp script. Let's just call it something like zombie walk. Now I'm going to double click that, it's going to open Mono Develop, which is an integrated development environment. Uh, you might have uh, Visual Studio. This is another part of the class, it's yeah. really uh, its own class in itself, so don't worry if yeah. you're like, if you're missing this, it's not, we're not going to do no. too much of this. Exactly. We're going to dive amazing. in and show you, and we're going to have it all saved for you. Yeah. Um, we're really going to show you just how easy it is to dive in and how it's not scary. That's the, that's the moral of the story. It's not like, oh, I missed this component. But it's not scary, it's super easy. And we'll get to you in, in a second. Is there a question? Just question. Just question. Alright, so you're going to be greeted with this screen. Now, like I said, some of you, if you opened it, um, if you're especially running on past, it's definitely not going to switch. It's not scary. Okay, so. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's a bunch of silver, yeah, this is a silver, um, wow. silver wall. I don't think I've seen this This is a little normal, look at that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, it's probably a Mac in disguise. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, okay, so then, you know, you Microsoft. <laughs> but if, uh, if you're not using a Mac and you installed Unity, it might have installed Visual Studio as your development environment. Just show them the code. Oh, yeah, yeah, just We're gonna don't use Visual Studio, code. use this. I'll show you later how to do it. But okay, so you're gonna be get this. So these are just the things that just come with it. So just don't don't let it confuse you. And I'll just explain what these two things are here. So you have void start and you have void update. Now, anything you write in here just runs on start once. So if you make it move or something, it'll do it once and that's it. Update runs every frame. So if you want to do something like moving procedurally through throughout, you're going to do it in update. So the way that we're going to do it, and the code is really simple. So we're going to be referencing, and I'll show you why I'm actually using this word. So if I go to Z-Walk right here, so that's our zombie object, he has a transform right here. So any property, I can just do transform dot position. Now, what that gives you, that gives you the X, Y, and Z of where the zombie is right now in the world. Um, so what I want to do with this is I actually want to store it in something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new vector 3. Now vector 3, x, y, and z, so that's called vector 3, so it's three vectors. Um, again, super simple, vector 3 position is equal to transform.position. Now what we have we have the position of the zombie. Now what we want to move that position. We want to move it in the Z axis. So that is the blue one you can see right here. I don't know if it's, it's big enough, but if you see right here, you have Y, Z, and X. That can give you a little bit of a reference so you know what, what direction you want to be going in, into the world. So we want to use Z. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do this new variable I just created position, which is position dot Z plus equals to something like 10, or let's just do 1 for uh, even slower just in case, it might go too slow. So the reason why there's the F there uh, is because it's a decimal, 
a float more specifically. But uh, for those who don't know what a float is, it's, it's a decimal number uh, that can go 0 0.000 whatever, or it could be a whole number. Okay. Super simple. Uh, position as e plus equals 0 0.5f, so that's, should move it forward. Now, the last thing, so now that we modify that position z, we just set it right back to the transform position. The transform position is equal to position. And I'll just save that, control s, go back into our scene. Yeah, I'll show them. So we'll do what we have to we're gonna be in here. So the code that I just created, I'm gonna just take it and I'm just gonna drag it on my zombie object. And that's the coolest thing about Unity is um, you can actually attach scripts to objects. So instead of having like code uh, somewhere in your game and then it's gotta find that right object that it's gonna move to you have to like you get variables and like which object is moving? No. With this, you put the code on the zombie, you put the code on a on a car, you put the code anywhere, it's gonna move that object. It's gonna move the object that the code is attached to. So that's one of the weird things, but also the cool things of Unity. Uh, unlike any kind of other uh, code authoring environment. Yeah, it's together. Like yeah. the, the code environment is, is it's, an, it's an integrated development environment, all of Unity. So you will not, for the most part, need any external tools. Maybe you have Photoshop or something yes. like that. That's but you, the beauty yes. of it is that you actually uh, you put the code onto a game object. It doesn't just float out there. Like so, you can yeah. directly affect game objects. So you want to put that code on a camera. You take that same code you put it on a camera. And the camera will move forward. Exactly. You take the same code you put it on the grass. The grass will move so forward. So let me show you guys so why it's why it's that so actually. fast. Um, now you you know you could just do it. Well, it didn't. well there's also one more problem here. So you can just do it by, uh, slow. Zombies. Yes. And you have the code forward. in it, they're all moving forward with essentially the same uh, code, so, but they can all have slightly different behaviors simultaneously. So you can make it, you could just make the number smaller, um, and you'll be doing that. Now, uh, for those that do Unity and stuff, there's a better practice for um, how to do, how to transform vectors, but this is good um, for people. So as you see, I'm looking at them, and I'm not doing anything. And he's <laughs> <laughs> doing that on his own. Yeah, so you went past the camera. So that is another thing that we'll, we can add, for example, is we can just draw, I'll just drop the thing onto the camera. And that's the beauty of kind of Unity so is the same code as Omni Block. Yes. Onto the camera. Oh, interesting, yeah. But no, the thing is that everything could be nested. So with Unity, uh, you have what's called so both moving. parents and child. Yes. So, so, yeah. so we're kind of like, right. we're kind of looking at, okay, so what we can do right they're now. They're both moving <laughs> at the same distance, the same speed, so it looks like they're not. So they actually are. No, you can see the grass when you look at the camera. So I'm going to rotate the camera and I'm going to do a, a view from the zombie's head. Yeah, so the beauty of, of Unity is you can you have this hierarchy. So when he's messing with it, when you see the words and little triangles, uh, is the hierarchy. And with that, yeah, you can get rid of the script. So you can take objects and make them children of other objects, which means that uh, they are intrinsically linked to that object. So what we're going to do here. Yeah. is we're going to put uh, the camera. So I'm going to put it somewhere, like, let me just see what a place that looks good if I look down. Do you know? Um, to, to, to I am. Yeah. So we're basically going to take the camera and we're going to make it a child of the zombie's head. So, so as, the, as the zombie head moves, the camera will move with it. So anywhere okay, the zombie so head will move. Somewhere there, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> you do that all the time? I know, but that's when <laughs> programming maps. Okay. Okay. Well, all right, so yeah, that's the beauty of it. So that you have, um, once you set up, and so, yeah, the rotation will change. So you just take that cardboard camera, and I'm just gonna put it into the zombie object, just like that. I'm just dragging on top of it, and now that's part of its hierarchy. So you know, the zombie object, it's in there. So if I press play, it should be moving together now. Now if I just do something like uh, rotate it down. So if you do that in cardboard, uh, you will be able to look down at yourself walking like a zombie. So how about we do that? Let's just do export it to this question. Yeah, could that have been attached directly to his head? Um, yeah, uh, actually, 
have it attached right now just to the base object, but right. as a skeleton, you can attach things to even the hand or whatever that could work for something like a weapon. Um, but yeah, the, the parent and child objects is super useful, um, and it'll just inherit what, wherever the zombie is moving, anything that's inside it as a child object will also move with it. So the, uh, yeah. the cardboard camera is not having the script now? No, I removed the script from the cardboard camera and it has no script, it's just it's moving with the zombie. It's, it's what, uh, can we have a separate script on the cardboard camera? Like, yeah, you can do it like that too. Following mm -hmm. the script of the zombie. So that's another thing with Unity, there's multiple ways of doing the same thing. Um, it really just depends on your preference and whatever works better. But yeah, you could just put the same code on the camera and make them just both move, or make the camera be part of the zombie. And, and this hierarchy thing, the way to use parents and child, yeah, is, is, is absolutely the best way of doing it without code. So if you see something already moving, instead of having a code and code the, the distance and the speed, just drop it right on and they're going to move together. So, so that, that works well with cars, like if you want to chase cam or you want a dashboard cam, you don't want the car to zoom off and the camera's still there for the camera. And so I guess more generally, I was just curious, when you're developing, like programming wise, are you just creating like a collection of scripts and like components and then dragging them and dropping them onto things? Or you can, yep. you can attach them to objects. Yeah. Okay. Or, or, or can you do it like more traditionally, like where you, you just have it, Absolutely, you can. You can add components from within the code. So you can just find its name or find its class okay. and just add class. And, and I imagine the yep. environment like autocomplete something like that. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, like I mean, that's really useful for things like you know, if you're adding objects. While you're in the game, like you know, if you press something and you spawn some coins or something like that, right. you'd be doing that in code. Like you won't be adding a coin script, you know, beforehand. You might add it later. But yeah, you could do it absolutely the traditional way. Uh, we're just doing it right now, like in the simplest way uh, to get you guys started. Yeah. Um, and so since Unity is everything is linked to, you only use the option that controls you move around when you're not doing Say that yes, again. yes. You, you can use the card control and the option to simulate the card going We're actually going to publish it now. But yes, yeah. so essentially like what he's saying is to preview it, um, when you're previewing it, and the play you mode. can simulate what it, is, what it would look like for the user. That's the option right there. Yeah. Yeah. Using, the yes, control and option. Oh, to, the map. to, to, to so move around with the mouse. Yeah, right yeah. Now. Use the option key or the alt key, Yes. and you'll see a rotation. So when you're yeah, in this, in this, in this view of the, uh, of the game, when you're previewing, you can use hold down control alt. and yeah. control or alt or yeah. for, for, for the, the cardboard Mac. code it's alt yes. all, all or option on the Mac. You, you can preview yeah. the look. So see I, it's kind of like intersecting his head, so you can do that. <laughs> so I probably just want to move it a little bit forward. So just you know, find our camera. And there's just, all these little like yeah, keyboard yeah, shortcuts little. that you'll you'll get into. But the main thing is learning how to navigate in 3D yeah. space, um, setting up the hierarchies, and that's it. Really, from there, you can put anything in the scene. You can put a VR camera in the scene, and you can you can walk right now. If you leave, you can walk away with that already. So what I'm gonna do before we publish this is I'm just gonna make a few more. Yeah, I'm gonna remove the oh, sorry, the, this one. I'm gonna remove the camera from the other ones. Did they don't need a camera? I just make some zombie buddies. <laughs> um, so you'll be part of the zombie pack. A shortcut for duplicating like that? Control C, Control D, just copy and paste. Yeah. Or okay, Command D. Or so yeah. use, uh, Command D, it, it duplicates it. Yeah. And yeah, that's something you'll be doing a lot, especially in, in like, you know, you have trees or grass or something. And you, you just uh, duplicate it, cut paste it, you rotate a little, and it, it's enough. Yeah, completely, especially like with the zombies, if you just rotate a little bit or offset the animation, you'd be surprised how um, and create the world. And there's different things like in the scripts, like you'll be able to modify the speed that these things are going at. You might make them a little bit random. So some are lagging behind others and maybe catching up a little bit later. It really depends on how complex you make the code. But right now, let's just say this we're satisfied with this and we want to export this to cardboard. So I'll just exit the play mode. While he's exporting, go ahead, brother, you have a question back there? Uh, I was wondering about the, the code, has, I assume, has access to the uh, higher field of the the mesh so you can drill down and find out where the feet are. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's usually in the biped, there's a skeleton are. right here. You see I have the biped selected and there's a pelvis, spine, left thigh, right thigh, spine, and then clavicle, 
upper R, <laughs> Yeah. And you can so write it like So in the code, you could use the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah you can pair something to just the finger and just have it you know, do something like that. Or as, as yeah, I just think it is, you've got the information of where his feet are, so you could actually walk based on where his feet are landing. Yeah. Oh, well, if you want to, like, that guy's going to do something yes. cool. So we, yeah. Yeah. we were trying not to get deep in it, but there is yeah, uh, yeah. applied motion. Essentially, there's a lot of different ways of doing the animation. And a lot of it is the best part for me, personally, about Unity, uh, as opposed to, like, any backend server language or whatever, is that when you're testing it, oh, my gosh, you're having so much fun. Yeah, that's if the you part turn it on games, yeah. and you get to throw a code on VR, oh, that's a little too fast to go back and code it. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's just right. And then you see these... I mean, the beauty of it is that when you have a, a, a movie, let's say you're just, even a movie, to, to, to reshoot a movie, forget about it. You gotta, you know, book everybody and make it, you wanna, maybe a little, a little change, you just change it right back in the scene and you, you can look around. So you're not just making a scene, you're making a world. Yeah, that's what VR development really is. Yes. Um, and you also get a lot of things for three, for instance, the physics engine yes. here yeah. is really awesome in the sense that you know, that zombie's walking around, now we can attach a chain to it and tell it to kind of swing. Mm -hmm. And it does it according to the motion. Yeah, it's it's even it doesn't even edit it change that while well, it's playing. Uh, that's and a phenomenon. So like, let's say the cube thing we did before. Let's say I make these cubes in front of these zombies. And it has the rigid body to them again. And it's just, you know, make these cube obstacles for the zombies. Oh, they might not have collisions. Yeah. And so you see this? So this is like an unpredicted problem right now. <laughs> but like it's playing, and before they get to the cube, I'll just add a collider. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, okay. And that's the fun of it. Like you're, this is more fun than any other development you could ever do or will ever be able to do. There is so, nothing. Yeah. Um, and the weird thing, he, he loves to, to make stuff while you're in play mode. So the one thing that you need to know about Unity is that while you're in play mode, uh, there's actually a preference that you can set to make this screen no. a certain color <laughs> while, you're in, while you're in play mode. Nothing saves. So once you exit play mode, all those boxes you created, oh, it's great. Oh, it's great. Cool. 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 I know that, but I'm just saying. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, but basically, all the changes you make to the scene, if you move stuff around while you're in play mode, while you're in this mode, it's so much fun. But then you. You see, you might have a little bug, like, cause, uh, I don't know, maybe it was just because I did it in play mode. That's why I only one of the options. Yeah. Yeah, one through one. Yeah, the you now have a present. But yeah, so, let's build. So now yeah. this is the this is the best part. So now you have this scene. So file you can preview it with, um, with the uh, command and, and the preview window. But what you uh, now want to do is you want to take it and and currency. Build it onto your phone. And that's the beauty of this. There's a few settings on your phone. So you, well, every switch. phone is a little different. You would have to go into developer mode and go, go on Google and figure out how to turn on developer mode in your phone. Some, some are kind of cool, but you have to go into like a version number and hit it five times or like ten times. Yeah, like each that. phone is different. But they have like very cool like, it's Easter egg kind of stuff. And you go into developer mode and then all of a sudden you take your phone and the way you charge it with the cable, you plug it into the computer, you plug it in and it will side load your app onto the phone. So you don't have to go to the, to the Play Store, you don't have to submit it to anywhere. You can try it out on your phone with one of these. Yeah, they, they, make, it, they make it easy to test. Um, so right now I'm in PC mode, so it's made to export a PC game. I'm just going to switch to Android. Um, and I'll just select Android and click Switch Platform. And what he went into is the Build and Run menu. So if you go into I showed them. Uh, file and Build Settings. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's basically so how you export it. You now what it's doing is converting uh, everything to be supported for Android. Uh, that might take a few minutes, but it's basically doing the whole job for you. Um, and it will make sure that it's 100% compatible with Android. Um, yeah. So when that finishes, uh, it didn't, honestly, uh, if I just had it Android mode to begin with, it wouldn't have to do that. The only reason why we're doing that now is because, let's say with that game developer, they just switched, I don't want to make a PC game, I want to make an Android game. <laughs> like, so yeah, the whole project being converted for Android. Um, okay. And that's the beauty of Unity. Like it's, it makes, you can export yeah. um, standalone executables, uh, like platform type stuff, you can export Unity, uh, Apple, everything from the same, and it's gonna, it's gonna be essentially the same game for every different platform. And it's all within here. So all this frame, that's why um, 
That's why you can't hold up of it. You know, it's like that. It's either community that you can download and get assets from, uh, advice, and then, yeah, and, and then export it to every platform on it. Please, can you be export the scene to, like, an MP4 file? Uh, you can. That's a separate issue. It's a separate thing. So what you're talking about is to uh, export it as a video. Yeah. Uh, there are several different ways of exporting video. Uh, it's not this. Uh, they would basically get a... What you would have is you would have the camera in the Unity scene and it would record that to a video. And there's different ways of shooting like 360 video. But so YouTube now has 360 video. Um, I have this workflow where you can do that by setting up a whole bunch of different cameras, recording all of them and, and putting it together. It's getting much simpler and easier and you don't have to do all that. So uh, yes, it is, it is definitely possible. And we will, I'll definitely talk to you about uh, exporting video and the other way around. We can maybe go very quickly into how to take 360 video, mm -hmm. throw it into a scene. Mm -hmm. so instead of having a zombie walk around, you're in well, a, need, a, a need specific plugin for that. I, yes. mean, I might, probably should have gone into that. We probably won't. But that could be, that could be no, um, maybe yes. some of the next ones. Uh, but yeah, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to do it just how I prefer to do it, is making an APK file, just simple. Click build. Uh, now here's the thing, if some of you are doing this right now, uh, if, you, if you're not, it's fine, but um, you have to have all the stuff installed, all the Android tools and all that, but mine's already all configured. Um, if anyone wants to, to, needs help with configuring any of that, we can do that after. But yeah, so I'll just click build. Oh, before that, tab, very important, you have to set your bundle identifier and won't let you build without that. And that's just your you know, company. Okay, I might see VRU or something, uh, you know, zombies. And that's what our app is going to be called. You can pick, you know, what Android wants to support, but it doesn't matter. This is some of the settings that are, you just yeah. have to get used to it. There's something you, it yeah. is best practices in terms of, of production of anything. Um, and a bundle identifier is something that you have in, in every uh, Android or, or yeah, It's just a way for it to know what's overwriting, what's a newer version yes. and stuff. But yeah, once we have that set, you just click build. And just select where I want to export to. I'm going to just call it you know, Zombies. Uh, and it's an APK file. It's going to compile it. Now, I wish I could have gotten uh, Chromecast running here, but they don't. their projector is weird. So that I can show you what it looks like in VR here. But we can just you know, hand it around and people can look. So, and this is literally the best part. So once you've built it, you have it on your phone, you can walk around. You unplug it from your computer, it's still on your phone. So you can go show people what you just made an hour ago. Um, and these, if you have like a scene like this, and somebody's never seen VR, and you pull out one of these and you show them a zombie moving in 360 space, it is mind blowing for people. So you know, yeah, I just literally. have my phone hooked up with USB. I'm just gonna send it to it. Well, I mean, it's 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 a. I feel like if you show it like a package, like it makes so much sense because you can. I can send yes. this to yeah. someone. And they can install it on their phone as well. So the way he did it, by, instead of I use Build and Run because I like the one button the solution. Uh, he did it the the way that you're supposed to do it actually. So you when you build, you hit just build. What it does is it creates an Android APK package. That's the Android app. And shows up here in my file browser. I just install it. And when you go to uh, submit it to the Android store, the Play Store, it is that APK. The yep. same APK. You take that, you upload it, and boom, you're on the App Store. So it's installing right now. And when it's finished installing, we should have what we had over there. So that's our zombie scene right there. Now, hold on one second. So if your cardboard main is not as good as cardboard head, man, but the head's not rotating. I use cardboard main, so it's not rotating. I'll use cardboard head. Alright, so. No, I'll use cardboard main. Alright. It's, it's a personal preference. Like the whole thing, with, there's no right answer. Lots of personal yeah. preferences. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of ways you can do that. Yeah. As long as it comes out, literally, Philippe has made his own alternative to uh, cardboard SDK, which is like much faster. It does all the same. More all the same stuff. And, um, yeah, a lot of the things that, in my opinion, that they're using can be a little inefficient, but for mo most intensive purposes, you, you can use it um, maybe at some point later down the line with the, with the meetup. Yes. We'll have the SDK to a point where it's ready enough to just give it out to you yes. guys. And, like, you guys will have something that even Google doesn't have. And one of the cool things is your part of this community, not only can you share amongst yourselves, but as we come out with stuff, you need people to test it. 
And if you guys have one of these and you come to the meetup, we'll have stuff that's not even out there yet. And you can test it for it. You can just play it, play games that don't even, that nobody else has played before. And these are just part of what we do too. It's like the cardboard where we have, we run, we also develop for Oculus, we develop for Samsung Gear. We develop for, we have Project Tango that we're also experimenting with. Uh, so we're always playing with the newest hardware that's coming out. And uh, the HTC, uh, we don't have it, but we, we have played with it. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, and that is it. As, as new stuff comes out, we're going to start show. This this class is about showing you the most economical, the simplest, yeah. the most affordable, most wide uh, widely distributed. Headmount display, which is called the HMP. All the design principles really stay the same whether you're doing cardboard or Oculus for the most part. Uh, just obviously, something if you're running Oculus, it can run more details because it's on a PC, this is on a phone. But yeah, so uh, I'm going to rebuild that with cardboard head this time. And what it comes down to is you're now solving problems in 3D space. Like you're solving uh, a whole new problems that have never existed. So a lot of this is very much frontier kind of stuff. This is very much, there is actually some very good documentation. That's the other thing that's very good about Unity is you get great documentation. Um, but some of the things are very new, isn't it? There's, you know, like in the same way film was as interesting as black and white, people were trying different things and seeing what worked, but people liked to try different things, see what people find, see what, you know, maybe it's fun to attach it to the chest area or something. You never know until you try it, until you test it, and so you get feedback from the community. And that's why as much as you can stay together after this, exchange numbers, um, I'll try to keep the, 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 the forums and stuff going and get as much of this to continue. Because this is really where it's at. It's not like you can go to a company right now that does this. It's all us. So as, as something something new comes out, we'll be the first to tell. Mm -hmm. so uh, this is it. You're looking at it. And then you kind of, right now what he's doing is uh, he's offsetting the rotation so that, and you can kind of see the problem. So when you test it, you see what is going on and you kind of abstract what is the issue, what went wrong here. And you, you do that by looking at what's wrong with the scene. Why is this not the way that I'm intuitively looking around? So if you're looking around and the, the angle's a little off or something like that, you, you see what is, what is wrong here. Uh, in this case, it's, it's literally the offset of the camera. I have a card that has a thing called track position. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what they would use that for. Google's uh, <laughs> always tracking your position. <laughs> the, thing <Yeah>. about, <laughs> the thing about Unity is that you have two approaches you can take. One is a workflow approach, and you've got some structured thing, and you've got a team of people with different kinds of expertise, some person a uh, creative uh, designer or artist, another one's working on the UI, another person's working on other kinds of things. And the other approach is you can do it organically. Right time, because this year will be, I think, the last year where it was kind of like here and there. Next year is probably it's hearing where it's yeah. established. And that's the thing, like if, you're, if you've done this long enough, if you've done anything in VR or 3D, when you see Unity, you know within the first hour this is the best stuff on it. And that's literally why we're behind you. There's, you know, there's Unreal, there's a bunch of things on there. There's Unreal Engine, like, Fire Engine and stuff, but like, personally, like, I think Unreal Engine has better graphics than Unity, but it, unless you like doing C++, <laughs> and like... And doing um, it alone, because there's not and much... And doing it alone, like, there's no community. Yes, um, yes, <laughs> yes. And, and, and unless you know, one, an asset yes. store, and, great asset. and also not for free, you have to buy it. You have to pay that off. No, 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 it's, no, it's no, free. No, free. But but it's free. Free. We're, <laughs> we're, 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 up here. we're just because what's happening with Unreal and Stingray and Unity is that they all are making each other go freer. Yes. Yeah, yes, yes, exactly. So it's, it's kind of so it's a competition. Unity, was, Unity had the pro version and the free version. They still do, but then when Unreal came out, they were like, no, we're going to give it away for free. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, Unity had to like give their their whole stuff away for free. So they're really like their business model is a little shaped now in terms of like who is going to get the pro version? Mm -hmm. You get what level seven or level eleven in the asset store? It's nothing. 
Well, I, I use Pro. Uh, yeah, I get these things that the black skin here. Uh, there's actually a lot of good reasons for using Pro, like uh, networking, for example. I know, I, I, I have it too, but, but it's still, it's like, you know, what they did there was just like, but the other thing about Unreal is that they have a visual scripting language built in, mm -hmm. which is actually oh, time is super Kismet. Hard. Is Kismet? That's what it's called? Yeah. No. No, it's called Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. And this, I mean, there are pluses and minuses. Yes. It's, it's actually, it's a, it's a beast for a lot, especially on a map. Oh, okay. Really oh, okay. On that note, what you said, the visual scripting language, um, here's a, like, again, the asset store is amazing. Yeah, the, the asset store is great. It, it's so, really fantastic. Yeah, and you can actually find multiple implementations of visual scripting. I know, but they're not that, they're not, even, yeah, even Playmaker is yeah. like, you know, but and this conversation is like, we can get deep on this, but the right. idea is you're comparing their apples to apples, like, more or less. They're, they're very smart. similar, yes, but they are uh, the same thing. They're the same, you have to choose one or the other. You can't go like, oh, I do have to put Unity, I have to put in Unreal. But to your point, it's like, you're right, this this time for these engines is that like they're, they're blowing up it. And yes. all of you guys have the excitement, which I think is, you should have, which is just like, it's like, Oh my God! Wait, you know, it's crazy. You're excited because like, you know you know what you're yeah, what you're holding. Insane. You're holding like really for free. Just give me a bar of gold for free. Okay, yeah, cool. You know. Like, that's that's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, think about this. Wait, wait, wait. Think about this. Apple TV, iOS TV. You can make it with this. Goes straight to iOS TV. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And that's the beauty of it. So it really comes down to you have a choice. You're gonna if you want to make VR, you're gonna have to choose Unreal, uh, Unity. There's, you know, uh, what is it? Um, there's the there's other ways, yes. and then the web ones. Too, there's a bunch of different ways of doing it. And um, your choice is going to depend on a few things. My choice, a lot of times, depends on community. Like, if I see that, first of all, a lot of people are using it. A lot of people are loving it. A lot of people are making stuff for it. That's going to be a huge plus. Before you can start looking at the, the capabilities and the graphics. Like, I can exactly. show you guys, actually, like, if you just Google something like Unity, how do I move an object? How do I move a zombie? Like whatever, yeah. you know, yes. you'll get so many. You have this great thing also called Unity Answers, and that's one of my favorite websites. It's literally just like a Stack Overflow, if some of you guys have used it. Just someone puts their script in, like, hey, what's wrong with this? And he's just gonna get a bunch of people, just telling him, hey, do it like this. You copy and paste it in, and it works. Um, they explain it all very thoroughly, and there's a lot of things you could really just look up online if you don't know. There's probably someone's asked it, probably someone's already answered it. Um, very few things, unless you're doing something very advanced that hasn't been done yet. But even then, that's why we have these kinds of communities. Because, you know, if you can't find something online, you can ask us. And uh, we've probably gone through that same problem and redone it. Or maybe there's just something new that just needs to get created. And that's always a great thing, too, because it expands the ecosystem. Exactly. And that's it. So, uh, another awesome part of the community, as part of this community, you get to have uh, some free raw web bars, just want to say. Um, but uh, this is not technically a sponsor, this is a, uh, it's a semi-sponsor, they, they definitely give me a lot of free product. I really want to do something very novel, uh, and that is to create a 360 ad for them. Nobody's ever done that before, for anybody, um, and you guys will be part of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a 360 camera right here in the middle, and as you guys come up and grab a bar, like open it, eat it and then tell your reactions into the camera. We're gonna create a uh, 360 directional sound. So you uh, try to speak into the mic if you can, um, or somehow, we'll just hope it works. Um, but basically kind of uh, tell your honest reactions to the product, and we'll see what happens, we'll see how this works. It should be cool. Yeah, then we have 12 of them up here. Uh, we'll bring more next time um, if people are really interested in the glasses, but I have this demo that I just built, and it's going around right now. Um, I guess like so I can call one on your phone too. Please, please. Um, we'll, we'll have, yeah, after this, we'll have like a tons of demo time. Um, cool, right? Everybody's down with the, with the concepts? Right. If, if they eventually reach over the edge, let me know and I'll just restart the app. <laughs> I didn't make anything to like. Um, that zombie will straight fall off the edge. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> actually, do they? Yeah. Well, no, you, they have to crash, right? Yeah, no, they won't. Just, they'll float. Yeah, they'll, they'll float. float. They'll float. Yeah, um, and that's the beauty of it. Like you can create things that are magical that fly <laughs> all the time. The zombies will fly, no problem. Um, it, so it's and it, or they can have like, be real, as realistic or as imaginary as you want. It's, especially, you know, if you're a, if you're a child at heart or if you have um, the, just the, the imagination of children 
all of this stuff you can do. Like where before, it, it took so much special effects and so much like to show somebody, oh, what is a flying zombie? Like, is it Detroit? No, now you just take the physics, and put a map. Just another thing too with uh, like, not just, I mean, imagination is like is huge with this, but one thing that I personally see um, that doesn't get done as much in the Unity community in general is like, uh, creating completely baseline like new things like someone would call me silly for wanting to make my own cardboard SDK for example. But then I'll make it and, I'll, and it runs double the frame rate and I show them and then it's not silly anymore. That's so, something me by the way. <laughs> so, so things like that, um, I personally am going to encourage you all more as like we start to get into more advanced lessons. I'll be showing you best practices and just like in general ways of thinking about solving these problems. Sometimes it is just better to go on an asset store and get some things. Uh, other times it's not. Other times you, know, you might end up creating something uh, better than, than what you could have gotten.